Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. Today I'm doing a video interviewing Floyd, who you guys have already seen before from Yoda Campers. He's lended me my van and I've decided to take a new direction with my channel and interview the interesting people I meet while traveling because it's a super important part of travel is all the talented and creative people you meet and I figured it'd be great to interview Floyd because he's also traveled a lot. I think you said about six years? Yeah, on and off. I was pretty steady for about six years. I did come back for a few months here and there. How did you finance that? How did you keep traveling? Because it's easy to save up for like a year, but then to keep going, what was your trick? Yeah, lots of tricks. I mean, I did have a little bit of money saved in the beginning. It wasn't much. And then I kind of just started getting, looking for odd jobs. I did a bit of work as a chef or kitchen hand. What about so. visa situations? Like, were these under the table kind of jobs? Um, some were. But in my scenario, I'm actually very lucky and hold a European passport, which means I'm quite free to work in any of these European countries. And the cool thing about Europe is they have a bottle return policy where you can actually collect quite a few bottles and make quite a bit of money. So I did that kind of. Okay, um, so your secret a, is you collect bottles. Yeah. You worked in different kitchens and in different parts of different countries. Is that what you did? Like kitchen yeah, hand? most of the time it was kitchen hand and, and some bar work. I'm a very cheap person for support. You know, at that time it was like rice and cheeseburgers. I don't need luxury. I was skateboard, basic clothes. I was pretty happy. But all around Europe, the bottle trick, it might seem like, you know, but you collect five bottles and you go get yourself a burger from cheese, like a cheeseburger from McDonald's. Just glass bottles? Um, plastic bottles are worth more. It's a very party culture environment. So you could get a shopping trolley and walk down the street at 1 a.m. and fill it. And then um, you also got paid for skating, right? Did you at some point? Yeah, so I spent a lot of time skateboarding, literally a.m. till p.m. Uh, just finding new spots, meeting new people. And at some point, a uh, Taiwanese lady approached me. She said she was going to send me a skateboard and give me details. <laughs> I'm like, well, this is weird, but here's my details. Yeah. And a few weeks later, there was a board in the mail. So that kind of st started off my, I guess you could call it a sponsorship. sponsorship. It wasn't a lot of money, but it enabled my travel. I guess you yeah. do what you can to stay on the road, so yeah. Yeah, everyone has a different journey and everyone can make money a different way, but for the main part, if you're passionate enough about what you're doing and traveling, money won't be an issue because your subconscious, your mind, your being is powerful enough to figure it out. You might do it tough for a while, but the drive that a human has to just keep going and keep figuring things out is that's enough. You know, a lot of people might look at my situation, oh, you're so lucky and this, that, and like, I think luck's not really a word in the dictionary. I think you're given luck by the energy you give mm. to others and how yeah. you go about your life, your interactions with other humans and opportunities will present themselves. Yeah. You help others in times of need and help somebody will come along and help yeah. you. So right now we're actually sitting at your commune and I know you've expressed to me that was actually one of the reasons when you were traveling, uh, there was kind of a reason why you started this place. Do you want to share? Or maybe explain yeah. more about what this place is. Like I can try and explain a little bit about that. Sure, why not? After about six years of traveling, all around the world, I uh, feel like some of my greatest experiences have been in these kind of commune or like experimental living situations where you've got a big share house or a block of property. Um, anyway, so like the culture of this build stuff, do it yourself, thrive in a kind of community that supports each other, whether it's dumpster diving, growing your own food or just joining forces on some kind of creative art project. All of that was just such a big influence in my travels. And then I came back to Australia and I thought, where's the communes? Where's the people at? Where's the live music and the jams and like this creative hippie culture? I tried to find it and I really struggled with that. Like they say classically, if you can't find it, build it. Here we are four years later. I wouldn't say it's 100% built building, it never ends, but we've built kind of a community place that is 100% off-grid. We've got our own septic system, hot water from gas and solar, wind and battery bank and solar panels. It's all 100% off-grid. We're lucky enough to have a small lake on the property which feeds us with water for the gardens and flushing the toilet. And we've also built a few composting toilets on site. So the main goal and aim there was to build a place that can support life in a really comfortable and sustainable way in an off-grid means. We're still in the middle of society, shops and all the main necessities aren't too far away, but we're still able to support our power needs and have enough land to experiment with growing our own food. And I have to say that's probably the most amazing thing ever. Like the whole town will lose power street lights are off, whatever, somebody hit a power pole or a storm knocked everything flat, we don't even notice. When those kind of things happen, you realize like, 
It is so good to be self-sufficient, to take care of yourself, the environment around you that takes care of you, and walking into the garden to pick a few pumpkins and some beans and, and chilies and whatever it is and make a big pot and then share that with the people around you is like, it's a powerful thing. It's like a return of energy. When you start traveling solo, you realize how important it is. You're in a new country, you're by yourself. Where do I meet people? How do I meet people? Where's the cool shit? What am I doing? Building a place like this, it's like giving back to exactly that, where people can come here, they can meet myself, they can meet other people at the commune. Immediately, they've got like 20 doorways open of possibilities of go here, do that. And for me, I understand how hard that is or what it feels like to be in a new country and not know who your friends are or you know where to take myself. So Where to start? Where to start and having a place like this a little community base can really help people. So I had a few different names for this place, Profound Town, all this, yeah, and anyway, at the end of the day, people convinced me that I should name it after myself. Um, and my name is Floyd Town. So not only is it called Floyd Town because my name's Floyd, but Town is actually my last name. Oh, really? Yeah. I thought it was something else. Yeah, so... Because oh, it is like a little town. <laughs> yeah, somehow maybe I was kind of destined to do this. Floyd Town, which is this commune you run, and then you also run Yoda Campers, where you do your van builds, right? Yep. So it's van builds and renting them out. Exactly. Why did you stop traveling? You stopped traveling because you ran out of money? Yeah, pretty much. Okay. But there was more to that. Actually, like, I kind of stopped traveling because I was tired. Traveling's fun, and it's great, and everyone sees kind of your social media posts of how fucking brilliant everything is, but, like, people don't see the downsides. Uh -huh. Yeah. You know, people share positivity on social media and they're just snippets of you having the best time. Yeah. But in and around that, there's a lot of dark stuff. Yeah. There's you getting robbed. Yeah. <laughs> there's you losing your money. There's yeah. you running for your life. There's you in a car accident. There's you missing planes and getting tickets messed up and costing you a lot of money. The whole experience was great. But after six years or so of traveling, like, my body was worn out. My mind was exhausted. I was sick of carrying a heavy backpack everywhere. You get to this point where you're not excited to be at the next hostel and you're not ready to like, woo, adventure, your friends thing too. Like, sick of not having a solid friend that's just there. Yeah. Having to, oh, I'm alone. Like, now I've got to have enough energy in me to speak a weird language or whatever to try and make another friend and then feel comfortable around that new friend that they got my back and we trust each other and everything's cool. And that's hard. So. I'm so happy you're talking about this because this is yeah. this has been my like issue. I'm like, do I want to stop traveling? But then again, I don't, and like that's kind of why I take so long everywhere I go. Because and I don't even go see all the sites. Like I've been here in Sunny Coast for three and a half months. I haven't even been to the Noosa Pools. I haven't been to the main attractions because it's. I'm just kind of like. I've done that. Like, I want to make relationships. Like, I'm, yeah, I'm tired. Yeah, it's that you're tired of going to a country, yeah. like, all right, what's the sights to yeah, see? Yeah, I'm like, I don't and care anymore. Let's make like. the same small talk a hundred <laughs> times today and ask the yeah. same questions. And, yeah. I mean, it's great, but it's bloody tiring. Yeah. At some point, you kind of feel like you want something real in a different sense, like yeah. stable relationships, people around you that you feel <laughs> comfortable with, like family you can know and trust. and when you're traveling you always have to have some sort of fierce boundaries yeah because you're in a place where you don't know too many people you could get ripped off you could get robbed you could trust somebody next thing they've got all your belongings and they're in another city what would be like a huge life lesson from traveling it could be a few if you can't really think of one because i know it's kind of a hard vague question no all you need is faith <laughs> all you need is faith that's it have faith in the universe have faith in the people around you. Have faith in yourself. I know when you're down and low, it's not so easy, but there are the times when you really just have to trust yourself. If you do good things for the people around you, if you do good things for the planet, and you take care of what you can, you're gonna be rewarded with the planet and the universe doing good things for you. For me, that's the one thing that's kept me going. Whether it's traveling solo, whether it's in my own business ventures, relationships, like whatever it is, just like have faith that the universe is pointing you in the right direction. It will continue to do so if you do the right thing by it. I think a big thing, just have faith in yourself. Yeah. Have faith that you can do it. I've kind of come to this realization that 
every decision I make is a great decision, which is a very ambiguous thing to say, but because they could be really bad decisions, but I don't actually believe there's ever really a bad decision because if you do make a mistake, it, you learn something from it and you grow and it maybe pushes you another way. So in a way, everything you do is a great decision Probably. if you have faith in it. Yeah, I mean, this is, this is a classic thing of like, how do I move forward? How do this? Like, go out and just make a whole bunch of mistakes. Yeah. Because you learn from that and there you grow. Like, how people ask, how did you learn to build campus? How did you learn to build a community? Where, how, I didn't know, I'd never built a van before. Things are not going well. Why? Why am I having a bad time? Why don't I have any money? Why did that, you know, like, why did I crash my car or whatever it is? My reflection is, what am I doing wrong to others? What am I doing wrong to the planet or the people around me? What, what's some advice that you would have for somebody traveling? Maybe a tip about like ah. finding friends or... No, this is my tip. I okay, wouldn't plan anything. <laughs> Seriously. I, yes. I'm serious. Yeah. Don't plan anything yeah. because in the very beginning I used to plan and everything never went to according to plan and you build up all these expectations in your mind and then you get frustrated because it's not going to your plan or you, you put, I want to jet ski, I want to go on ball and do all these and then you're tired and you're like, why am I not enjoying my travels because I'm freaking exhausted, you know? Yeah, and you're and, like stressed out trying yeah. to follow this plan that you set yeah. and then if things aren't going to plan, you're frustrated or annoyed that yeah. they're not and you're not having a good time. No, and if yeah. you just don't plan anything, I mean, I'm a little bit on the extreme side, you might be the same, like I, have, I don't plan anything even the day of, so I don't even know I'm going to sleep. Because I like it that way because I don't know who I'm going to meet. You know, I met somebody recently at a festival and then I got invited to go sailing to Fraser Island for a week. Making solid plans and forcing yourself to stick to them yeah. creates extra pressure that's not needed. But it also blocks you from other opportunities that yeah. might have arisen and you'll say no to those opportunities because you're it's trying to stick to, to your, your plan. plan. Yeah. Um, I think it's good to have ideas. I always have a little bit of an idea in my head. I'd like to do that. I think I'd like to go north. I think I'd like to see this place. But if it doesn't align, I'm, I'm open to new possibilities and, and also don't rush. Yeah, I resonate with that a lot, you know, because you're out there to travel and meet, you know, life. It's this journey where you're trying to enjoy it. Yeah. And if you're creating, like, added stress and must do this, must do that, and X amount of time and thing, then, like, yeah. how much fun are you really having? Because yeah. you're just stressing trying to get one place to the next on a time constraint to this, to see that, to grab a picture to what because you need to share it with your friends to make you feel good about mm. that you've been you know it's like that's not helpful to self like sometimes you just need to stay in bed all day and watch Netflix because you're tired but if you had a plan and an expectation that you had to go do all this you're not gonna fully enjoy it and you're gonna be unhappy when really all you wanted to do was do nothing it's okay that's yeah. what people need. It's okay. It's your journey. It's your life. And don't be so yeah. hard on yourself because as you're saying, just have faith. You're not always going to do things the right way. You are going to make mistakes. I make mistakes all the time. And even on my channel, like people call me out for it. And honestly, you're right. Yeah, I, I do a lot of dumb shit, <laughs> to be honest, you know, and, and I'm probably going to do that my entire life. And that's fine. That's because I'm human and the whole idea is that I learn from it. Or maybe I don't learn from it. They have to do it multiple times to make that mistake, you know? Like, you know how many times I've had dairy when I'm lactose intolerant? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for hearing out our insight and giving us a few minutes to see what our lives have been about and how that may impact yours. Poppy is such an amazing person and I'm really glad to have met her. Open Likewise. book, <laughs> smiling character, just giving energy of whatever her experiences have been and I'm sure she'll reply to your comments. If uh, you're interested in any of the things that I've talked about, whether it's businesses or mindset or life goals or whatever it is, like send me a message, make a connection. Come to Floyd Town if you're yeah. in the area. Come and visit yeah. if you're in Australia, if you're in Brisbane. And if you want a van build, I'm definitely, when I buy another van, I'm coming to you and we're gonna build the van. I'll help you build the van. So you might see that as well. And yeah, maybe we'll make some more videos in the future. And as always, you are on the adventure. <laughs> it's backwards though, because it's mirrored, <laughs> right? Well then, I don't know. No, it has to be see-through, so, because it's mirrored, right? I don't know. No, it's not. Okay, let's end it on that. Vem mais uma vez Veja que é como dançar Se entregue de uma vez Na dança se deixa levar